Lottie allows you to create and use excellent animations, especially for micro interactions. And they recently pushed an update that allows you to export Lottie animations from within Figma itself. So I'm gonna show you how to create this menu interaction here first in Figma, then we're gonna export it and that'll show you how to control it via JavaScript in an actual web project. So let's get started. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. All right, here I am in Figma with a new document. We don't have a frame yet, so we're gonna hit F on our keyboard and we're just gonna drag out um, hold, while holding shift a perfect square. Um, so, you know, something around 300 by 300 will work for the width and height. All right, at this point, we're gonna do a hamburger menu. So it simply consists of three lines typically, and we're gonna stylize ours a little bit different. So hit L for the line tool, and then we're gonna hold shift and just kind of drag out a line roughly right around there. After you have that line, you're gonna come up here and you wanted to center that here within this frame horizontally. After that, we're gonna to go to something like, I don't know, 15 for the stroke uh, width. And then also we're going to have round on the end caps right there. Okay, so I'm gonna move this down a little bit more in the center and then we're going to hold shift and alt and then just drag down probably somewhere right around there and then hit control D to duplicate that one more time. All right, so now with all those three, we could take these and just get them centered until we get that center little um, notification. So at this point, I, the starting animation, I want it to look like this. I'm gonna hold shift and bring this top one to the center. Hold shift, bring this top line, or the bottom line rather, to the center as well. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. I might make these actually a little bit thicker, around 19, okay. All right, so now at this point, this is what we want it to look like while we're hovering over it. And so we want to get some guides real quick. So Shift R will get you these uh, guides and we'll create a horizontal guide right here, um, right where the anchor points are to be. And you can also hit Shift R again. Let's get over here, get the anchor point over here. They should snap to where the actual anchor points of the path are. We'll create one right here and then also drag one right down there as well. Okay, so this is gonna make our life easy when we go to animate these strokes to make sure everything's kind of uh, symmetrical. Control D now, and that will duplicate it. This, was, this is gonna be the frame of what happens when we hover over the animation. And so for this, I'm simply gonna double click onto this bottom path, take the anchor point and drag it right there to the intersection of those grids or the rulers or the guides, whatever you wanna call them. And we're just gonna make them grow out real quick. And then the final state um, of this animation when it's hovered, being hovered over is gonna change into an X. So the idea is like they hover over, a navigation drops down, and then it allows them to close it by clicking X or probably just moving off. So in this case, um, we an X only has two lines, but we have three. So we need to do something to change this middle and hide it, this middle line. So if we drag it over here, something like this, and then we'll take the opacity to zero. Now we only have two lines. We could double click this top line, we'll drag it over here, double click this one, the bottom one, and drag this up here. Okay. So now we have our animations, shift R to get rid of the guide view. And now what we have is a couple options. We can go to plugins and then we go to Lottie files uh, if you have it installed already. If not, just go to find more plugins, choose, just do a search for Lottie files, install it. It's gonna ask you for an account, which is free at lottiefiles.com and then log in. At that point, once we have it loaded up, we could select our frame one, come over here to export to Lottie and we can actually just click export to Lottie. And what this will do is give us some predefined animations like rotate, you can pulse. And again, this is ignoring the animations that we want because we haven't defined those yet. But this can be just a quick way to get animation without actually having to animate. Um, but if you want more fine control over your animation, you can create your own like we're about to do here. So what we do is we go to prototype up here and then over here, we're going to drag this over 
drag a connection and for the interaction details, on click or whatever, that doesn't matter. We don't need that. Um, what we do need is uh, we're gonna choose a, a smart animate, uh, about 300 milliseconds and that should be good. So now I'm gonna move this over and finally we have a connection from frame one to two, then two to three. Um, and this is the exact same thing. So now what we can do is if we go here, we have a flow starting point. You wanna click that to make sure you have flow one right there. Now at that point, we simply go over here. You know, let's go back here. And if we choose select prototype flow, flow one. And there you go. This is the animation. As you can see, it's just continually looping over. And this is what we want. So if we click save to work, work, uh, work place, private animations, let me hit save. Okay, great. So now at this point, we can actually open this up in Lottie and we can then download it and integrate it on a project, which I'll show you how to do now. All right, now at this point, I am at LottieFiles.com in my workspace, and this is the one that we just created. If we click it, we can see it in action, and it's going crazy, looping and all that good stuff. So over here, we have four different options and really just split up into two. One is just a minif minimized or optimized, essentially. Um, if you click this and you don't have an account, I, you're gonna have to get an account in that way, but otherwise you can download just the regular Lottie JSON or the dot Lottie, which we're not gonna get it into. I'm gonna click that, and now I see in my folder here, we have our new one that was just downloaded. Okay, so now, now that you have it downloaded to your desktop, we wanna go to index, type in index.html to create one, exclamation point enter to get some quick boilerplate. We're gonna do link CSS main.css here. And then for our markup, um, let's just kind of style this like how it might be in a real app. So we'll just do like a section here. We'll do a nav element um, and then we'll have an A element. Inside of A, we're gonna have two columns. We'll use display flex to get them in um, a two column sort of or orientation. Um, the first one's gonna be the container for our Lottie animation. We can just use a div element for that and a div element of icon and just leave it empty. That will become our selector in a second. Then we're just gonna have a span element that will hold our text menu. So we'll have our icon and then menu next to it, typical pattern, same old, same old. So now we're gonna go ahead and we want to include the Lottie script, the JavaScript file, lottie.min.js. So I just typed in Lottie CDN at Google and found this right here and this will work just fine. Of course, you can use NPM or whatever to install that in a more robust environment. But now we're just gonna do some JavaScript right here. So for our JavaScript, what we wanna do is we want to first access our uh, icon right here. So we're gonna say const, we'll just say icon equals document.query selector class icon. Great, now we have access to that. And now we're gonna use Lottie load animation. In fact, uh, my GitHub Copilot automatically filled it in for me. So um, this isn't all correct though. So our container certainly is icon. That's what we want. Render is SVG, we want that as well. We don't wanna loop it. We're gonna change that to false. Autoplay will be false as well because it starts playing, it's just gonna to go to that end X state. We don't want that. All right, now the path though, uh, we wanna get that file that we downloaded, we wanna get that into here. I'm gonna rename that, and we're gonna name this here uh, to menu. All right, so now that that's named to menu, we can come over here and modify this to menu.json. Now let's save it. I'm gonna right click, open with live server. You're gonna need the live server extension. If you don't have that, you can just install it over here under the extension section. And there we go, we have a very large SVG graphic. Uh, this is where the CSS will come into play. Let's get this, uh, before we make it animated with JavaScript and all that, um, let's get this set up with our CSS. So I'm gonna create a new folder called CSS, main.scss for SAS, and then we're gonna click watch SAS. You'll need this uh, the live SAS uh, compiler extension over here as well to get that working. And by the way, we don't really need SAS for this little example, but I'm gonna assume that in a more robust environment, you'd have it installed anyway. 
Um, for body, we're just gonna I'm just gonna paste in a few uh, properties for this first rule set. We're using uh, enter, display, grid, place, content, center. We only have this one element to feature, so we might as well center it in the viewport. Um, and then finally, we also have nav A. And what we're gonna do is uh, we're going to do a couple things. Again, I might as well just paste this in. Display, flex, align item center, that's vertically, just to get that menu um, type center aligned in relation to the, uh, what do you call, the actual icon. Font size, 1.5 rem, blah, 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 blah. And then finally, I do wanna, uh, well, we're gonna leave this right here and just see what this looks like uh, to begin with. All right, so this is way too large, and to fix that, we can just um, specify our icon selector, and we could set a width, or yeah, a width of, let's say, um, 1.8 M units. Let's save that, we'll go back. There we go, that's much better. So I'll just zoom up here, and then I wanna add a little bit more white space between them, so I'll just do gap of like 1.5 M units, actually that's a little bit too much. I think we'll do point, yeah, more like 0.3 or so. That's much better. So now what we wanna do is we wanna add an event listener of mouse enter, all right? You don't wanna use mouse over because it'll fire every single time the mouse moves over it. We only want it to move fire once, once you move into that element. Um, and then what we're gonna say is we're gonna open this up and we're gonna say um, Lottie.play. Now let's see what happens just when we do that alone. Let's get this over and there we go. All right, so it just goes all the way forward and stops and it, it doesn't work again. So let's figure out what we can do opposite. So what we can do is take this right here, duplicate it, mouse over, or wait, mouse leave rather. And then what we're gonna say is Lottie.setDirection negative one. Now what this will do is reverse it. So it's, it's, it's going to be kind of like a seamless situation. So if I hover over it, we reverse, look at that. Now, now it doesn't work again. Why is that happening? Well, we need to take this set direction and we have to set it back to the default position of one, or the, or the default, I, I guess you would say default direction. So now when we hover over it, look at that. And then finally, if we think that's a little bit too slow, you can also set Lottie.set speed. Let's just do like uh, three. This will make it three times as fast as what it currently is. And look at that. Now, of course, there's uh, a lot of other stuff that you can do um, with the JavaScript here. So I suggest just take a look at the docs um, for all the different methods and events that you can tie into, and especially in order to create a multi-step sort of animation where you have different points in the animation timeline that you perhaps you defined in uh, Figma, and you can you can make something more robust in that regard. So anyhow, hopefully you found that useful. Uh, if so, definitely check out designcourse.com, all the courses that are available here, especially the UI UX courses, and I will see you all very soon. Goodbye.